why I came. <laughs> I'm gonna leave now. <laughs> Just for that applause. What if you started your day that way with somebody clapping for you? Wouldn't that feel good? I think we should clap for each other. The reason we should is because the cynics and the negaholics are winning. Do you know what a negaholic is, right? They complain about everything. I ate too much. You ate it. <laughs> the hot tub's too hot. It's a hot tub. I think we need to ask ourselves different questions, because if you ask lousy questions, what will you get? All day long, lousy answers. Ask yourself this question right now. What's going well? What's going well for you? Personally, professionally, something's going well. Even the negaholic can find something going well, can't they? At least I woke up. I think this question can change the world. Asking yourself, what's going well? The two most critical times of your day are when you wake up and when you go to sleep. When you wake up, it sets the tone for your day. When you go to sleep, it sets the tone for your dreams. Ask yourself better questions. Before my feet hit the floor in the morning, I always ask myself, what's going well? Always can find something going well. At the end of the night, I always ask, what went well? Truly a powerful question. I really appreciate the introduction, uh, Michael, but I'm going to tell you guys the truth. I was born on another planet. <laughs> you ever see that movie, Brother from Another Planet? <laughs> it's about me. <laughs> totally another planet. I was born in Texas. <laughs> another planet. I grew up in a tiny, tiny town. None of you have ever heard of it. This town is so small that the welcome to San Augustine, Texas sign is the same one says leaving San Augustine, Texas. <laughs> 2,400 people and a goat, and I'm related to all of them. <laughs> yes, including the goat. And I was back there recently because the goat had died. Uh, no, this part's really true. I was back there because uh, you know, I was back there just to, you know, because uh, someone, when a relative had died, but I was going into a uh, convenience store, and this guy walked up to me, and he says, you're a bell, aren't you? I said, yes, I am. He said, I could tell by the way you walk. I was like, really? He said, you know, I'm related to you on your mother's side and your father's side. <laughs> so, <laughs> very humble beginnings for me. Very <laughs> humble beginnings for me. I grew up in a house worth nowhere in the chairs you're sitting in. No running water, no indoor plumbing, which also means there was no outdoor plumbing. Tin roof, the whole deal. We were extremely poor, so poor that uh, it's hard to even imagine it. But what's interesting about it is we never knew it because we lived with my grandfather. My grandfather was an amazing man. He died in 1996, but I have to tell you something. He's in this auditorium now. If I say anything worthy of repeating, it's rooted in my grandfather. Living with him was like living with Socrates, Plato, Aristotle, all in one. Brilliant, brilliant man. What I want to share, with, I want to share a bit of my story there um, because I think, as my grandfather was a farmer, he would farm uh, the land, and my job as a child was to run water out to him in the hot Texas sun. And he always had a big smile on his face, and he also would drop a pearl of wisdom. And that's why I like being here at TED, because TED is, we're trying to spread a little wisdom with each other. My grandfather always said, give away knowledge and give away love. It's the only two things that will multiply. They grow. Give away love. I have three daughters, their middle names are Grace, Hope, and Joy. And I tell them this, a person can live 40 days without food, three days without water, but not a moment without grace, hope, and joy. And they do what you do, oh, daddy. <laughs> I don't say it a lot, I try to hold back a little bit. Anybody got teenagers in here, anybody? 
Okay, let's have a long moment of silence for them. <laughs> it can be challenging, right, in your own household. I love this topic of crossroads. Crossroads is important for us to sort of think about uh, because the question for many of us is, you know, which way do we go in our lives? Is it this way or is it that way, right? There are three areas of battle and crossroads that most of us are in. That's with ourselves, with each other, and with nature. My talk today is really about you and reminding you of one thing, maybe a few more than one. I want to remind each of you that you are a miracle. When you were born, that's what they said, or at least that's what they should have said. You're an absolute miracle. Everybody in this room is a miracle. And part of my objective is just to remind you of that, okay? Everyone, point to yourselves. Go ahead, point to yourselves. Notice everyone's pointed to their heart. Nobody in here is pointing to their shoe, their knee. <laughs> They're pointed here. I want to get you to follow your heart, clear your mind, and take care of your body. If you do those things, it'll be difficult for you to wind up in the wrong place. Follow your heart, clear your mind, and take care of your body. Super important for all of us to do. Now, what's water the bamboo? Giant timber bamboo is an interesting plant. The farmers will take a bamboo seed and they will water it for a full year. And after a year, you know what they'll see? Nothing. <laughs> they'll water it for another year and you know what they'll see? Nothing. They'll water it for another year and do you know what they will see? Nothing. I thought this was a quick crowd. <laughs> but once giant timber bamboo touches the surface, it will grow over 90 feet in 60 days. That is a foot and a half a day. A foot and a half a day. There was a grove they found that grew four feet in one day. I figure this audience can handle that. That is remarkable growth. I've studied successful people, successful teams, successful individuals, successful leaders all my life. And all of them, whether they know it or not, they water the bamboo. But imagine you, your dreams, your hopes. What are they? What were they when you were 11, 12? Your hopes, your dreams. And what did people say while you're watering your bamboo, by the way? What will they say? It's not going to happen. What are you doing over there? And you know what you tell them? Tell them to mine their own bamboo. <laughs> My grandfather talked to me about this idea of everybody gets an acre. Everybody gets an acre. Everybody gets an acre. Take care of your acre. Handle that. You got to weed it. You got to take care of it. This grove of giant timber bamboo the most important thing about it are not visible to the eye. Giant timber bamboo roots will grow over 100 yards, longer than a football field. Your roots are your values. All of us are connected, deeply connected, deeply connected. We have to look at our lives that way and how we're connected with each other, with ourselves, and with nature. If an earthquake happens here, ground doesn't move. Mudslide doesn't move. The most important things about you are not visible to the eye, your values, the things you actually care about. Again, watering is lonely. The question for you is, what are you doing today that you won't see results from four, five, six years out? We have to be a bit more patient, don't we? in this instant gratification society, right? Waiting at traffic lights. Why does the email go faster? Why am I not the VP? Just walked in the door. <laughs> I believe we need to go back to an agrarian model and with all the things you deal with, whether it's educating your kids, whether it's in your business, it takes process, it takes time. Why is this important? Why is this important? No farmer in the land would ever dig up a seed to see if it's growing. 
Let it germinate a little bit. Be patient with yourselves. Be patient with each other. My goal for you is think about being a bamboo farmer. Be a bamboo farmer. What would a bamboo farmer's characteristics be? What would they have? They'd have patience. They'd have persistence. And they would have self-discipline. Discipline. The human is the only creature that gets in its own way. I met my best friend and my worst enemy this morning, brushing his teeth. And so was I. He waved, and so did I. If we take care of ourselves in that way, I don't know anyone perfect except my wife. <laughs> That's it. The rest of us are struggling, <laughs> right? And for all of us, we need courage. Courage, because there's doubt in us, right? But if you think about this, I begin with this idea with this idea that you're a miracle. A miracle. Think about that. But a little bit of doubt can destroy a miracle, right? We got to have courage, which is courage, heart and spirit. Bring that to your life. Bring that to your work. Bring that to your community. Very, very important. And also belief. You got to have belief. But how do you generate belief? I believe it's your language. The language you have to yourself, your self-talk, that monkey in your head, that negaholic in your head telling you're not good enough, you're not worthy, and we need to change that talk. 90% of conversations, psychologists suggest, are with yourself. With yourself, how you talk to yourself. What's your language like? Because language determines how you think, how you think determines how you believe, how you believe will determine what's true. Change your language. Change your language and how you talk to yourself. It'll form how you think. And if you have the right belief, you'll take the actions to make it true. All great things started that way. All great things, they start in your head. Confucius said a journey of a thousand miles should begin with a single step. See, Confucius was confused. Because I believe it should begin with a map, a compass, or someone to follow. <laughs> Where are we going? Start with self. Handle that. Know what you care about before you set a dream or a goal. Know what you care about first. Then set your vision. Very important to do. When you get off the train in England, what do they tell you? Mind the gap. Mind the gap. We got to mind the gap between what we say we care about and how we're living our lives. Mind that gap. Otherwise, what do we do? Fall through. All of us need to mind the gap. Mind the gap of what you say you value and what you care about. I'm going to give you the secret to happiness as my grandfather gave it to me. Went something like this. I'm four years old. My grandfather says, boy, lost my southern accent. You want to be happy? What would you say? Yeah. Of course I want to be happy. He says, boy, do you know what happy people like? Four years old. Ice cream. <laughs> he says, no, 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 no. Happy people like what's happening. Do you notice any similarities in those words? Hap. Okay. Back in the 14th century, those P's were B's. They come from a different word. Do you know what word that is? I'm four years old. Habit, habit. See, if you made your values your habit, you would like what's happening. Then you would be happy. Think about that for a moment. What do you care about? What do you care about? What are your values? And it doesn't mean we gotta uh, do a bunch of things for them. It's interesting about this is, I do a lot of talks all around the country, had been away from my then two-year-old daughter for a week, Sophia, Sophia Joy. Come back home, I look at Sophia, and I say, whatever you want to do for 20 minutes, Daddy will do it with you. She's kind of a crazy kid, so I had jeans and a t-shirt on. This kid says, hey, let's go to the side yard and find some bugs. 
My job was to roll rocks over. So I'm rolling rocks over for this kid. We're rolling rocks over. We're rolling rocks over. We're looking at bugs. She sees her very first potato bug. Absolutely loses her mind. <laughs> Just a potato bug. You know what she says? Can you eat it? <laughs> Can't eat that bug. <laughs> she plays around with it, and it was like clockwork. Looked at my watch. Time to go in, sweetie. We're going in. Shower, come downstairs at dinner. What is she talking about? Potato bug. The next day, she's talking about the potato bug. She's six years old today. Pardon me, six and a half. If we go by that spot, that kid will talk about that potato bug. It's like I took her to Disneyland or something. <laughs> What I want to convince you to do is find some tiny action around the things you say you care about. Tiny, super small, something doable, something you can do in the next 24 hours, next 48 hours. Ooh, golden. You will like what's happening, and you will be happy. Make it a habit. Make it a habit. All of us need to sort of work on making those things our habits. And remember that the fact that you're a miracle. So important for you to remember this. What's crazy about a dog chasing his tail? It already has it, <laughs> and so do you. <laughs> There's no need to chase miracles because you're chasing what you are. This idea of relationships is broken down. How many of you have ever had a math class, science class? How many of you have ever had a relationship class that wasn't based on marital relations? None of us. What do you care more about, algebra? Or your relationships. <laughs> Focus on the right things. Bamboo farmers do. Tend your relationships. Super important for all, you all to do. I hope you all got your water the bamboo bands off your chair. Did you get it now? Did you get it? Do you have your water the bamboo band? Because we're going to do the water the bamboo oath. I want everyone to put your band on and stand up. Stand up and raise your band hand, okay? Because once you start watering your bamboo, once you start, there will be challenges. Okay, ready? No matter what challenges come my way, I will continue to water the bamboo. That is a beautiful sight. Thank you very much. Yeah. And keep in mind, keep in mind this: when you're watering your bamboo, make sure you water it with grace, hope, and joy. Thank you, Ted. Thank you. Thank you.